Hi guys, this is Fiona from IELTS with Fiona and in today's podcast I'm going to be answering the question I got recently which was about the different IELTS reading question types. It's just that people have different words for different question types and that's what I'm going to go through today and with some tips for each different type. It doesn't matter how many question types there are, if your reading skills are not good, then you'll find them all difficult. So the main thing you should be developing is your reading skills and actually worry less about the question types. You know, a, a good reader can handle any question type. It's, it's like driving a car. If your driving is good, you can drive it anywhere, on the motorway, on country lanes, in busy cities. If you've passed that level of being a capable driver, then you should be able to drive anywhere. So you get some people that say, oh, I never drive on the motorway because I don't have motorway driving skills. Your, your level of reading has to be good enough. And the only way you can do that is to read a lot. That's all. Read a lot, improve your vocabulary, become a reader, practice, check your answers and try to understand answers any answers that you got wrong. So I've written a blog about this. It's it's live. You can go to my website, ieltsetc.com. And it's called the three main IELTS reading question types, because I believe there are only three. Number one, you have to match things. Number two, you fill in gaps. And number three, you choose from a list. That's it. In more detail, matching things, you could be matching headings, statements, uh, sentence endings, people, dates, and filling in gaps. What do you have? Summaries, notes, tables, flowcharts, sentences, diagrams. It's, it's all the same strategy. It's all find the right word. It's just a different way to present information. That's all. And finally, choosing from a list. Multiple choice. You've got four choices. True, false, not given. You've got three choices. Yes, no, not given. Three choices. It's, it's choosing from a list. And very often the matching things is choosing from a list because you've got maybe a list of five things and you have to choose two. So it, it's, it's all the same. And, and that applies to the strategies too. So I used IELTS.org as my guidance. Um, I used that as my guidance when I created the course. And I've got that link there for you. And I compare that link if you click on it and it shows how my course reflects there. They say 11 different types. And Today, I'm going to go through those 11 types so you're clear about uh, what some people call them and what they actually are. For example, well, let's do the first one. The first one is really easy. It's multiple choice questions, MCQs. And in its most basic form, you just choose one correct answer, A, B, C or D. Again, you might have to match a sentence and choose from five. That could be called a, a matching activity. It could be called a choosing from a list activity. It, but it's generally a multiple choice question because you have a, a list and you choose one sentence ending that matches. So, you know, maybe try not to worry so much about these labels. The difficulties with all multiple choice type questions are distractors. Of course, if there are four choices, only one is correct. So the three other ones will trick you and they will look kind of similar to the correct answer. So my tip is to ignore the ones that use the same words as the text. The correct answers are usually synonyms. 
And if you go there again to my blog for each question type, there's a link that will take you to some practice, actually lots of practice. And if you put uh, a search in the search bar or look at the categories on my blog, you'll find that's an easy way to practice them as well. So in my course, um, the multiple choice example was a part two about reading habits. So I definitely cover that. The number two, the second type of question, according to the official guidelines, is identifying information. Now, if you read the guidelines, this is true, false, not given. They've just given it a different label, but they actually say that this is true, false, not given. And what's difficult about this? Well, lots of people don't like this question because it involves so much thinking. You have to find the information, you have to analyze the information, understand it, and then possibly look for something that's not there. And it's, it's tricky. So my advice for this is always to turn the statements into questions and to try to answer those questions in the text. I go into this in a lot more detail if you click on the link. I'm not going to go into too much detail today. So number three, IELTS.org, they say identifying writers' views or claims is the third type. But this is yes, no, not given. You probably recognize that. You maybe don't recognize the official name for it. Identifying writers' views or claims. And the difficulties are exactly the same as for true, false, not given. The only difference is that these tend to be about opinions because it's the writer's views, whereas true, false, not given are usually facts. So in my course, there are two examples. There's the Henry Moore history of Henry Moore and uh, Roman tunnels. And there's true, false, not given in both of those. And then there's yes, no, not given in the part two changes in reading habits. So all of those questions are addressed in the course. Um, number four, they say, is matching information. Some teachers call this matching statements or matching paragraph information. I tend to call it matching statements. And I've got an example in the course, which is driverless cars. It's a part two reading. So um, matching information is difficult. You're given a list of statements and if you've got a long text and a short time, it's quite hard to find those statements in the text. So some people recommend that you do this question type last in that passage, because if you've got other questions you and you do those first, that will help you do the matching statements more quickly because you will be more familiar with the text. A similar activity, number five, is matching headings. And I cover this in the course with the desalinator text, and it's a part two text. Um, matching headings, very similar to matching information. You just need to get the main idea of each paragraph. And that's difficult, especially if the paragraph is long. My tip is that the first line often, so often, just sums it up. Number six, they call it matching features. But this is a really broad category. Some teachers call it categorizing features. Some call it name matching because you often have to match people, usually researchers or experts, with their opinions or their theories or discoveries. And or it could be matching an event with a date. That's a simpler one. The opinions are quite difficult because very often they mention a lot of researchers. So you've got to cross out the ones 
that they don't mention in the text. And, oh, sorry, I mean, usually there's maybe three researchers you have to find, but there are six in the text. So just go and find those three that you need to find and try to understand what is their main opinion or theory and then find a statement to match. So you're almost working backwards in a way. Again, I explain that in more detail if you click on the link on my blog. The category seven, they call it matching sentence endings. I think that's pretty straightforward and clear. You've got maybe five sentences and you give they give you the first half and you match them with the second half. It's similar to choosing from a list because you choose the right answer from a list. It's difficult because sometimes all the sentences seem to match each other. The theme is, of course, the same, but you can easily eliminate the ones that are wrong, e either because they're grammatically wrong or they don't make sense. So make sure you understand the first half of the sentence and then um go to the text to try and locate it and understand what they are looking for in the second half. And in my course, Matching Sentence Endings is Fairy Tales Are Scary Tales. And Matching Features is Driverless Cars and What is Exploration. And Matching Headings is The Desolinator. Sorry, I mentioned that before. Sentence completion. Ah, right, the next one. So we've covered those types of um, matching and multiple choice. Now is the last group. It's the gap fill and so many different ways of doing gap fill. The first one they call sentence completion. And it's, it is what it says. They give you a sentence with a gap. My example is the reading habits, passage two, and the advice for, for all types of gap fill is the same. Even when you read the IELTS.org blog, they keep saying the same thing and again and again. Check the instructions, check the number of words you're allowed, copy the words exactly as the text, check your spelling, uh, use capital letters if you want to, and they all come in the same order as the text. My extra tip would be to always try to guess that type of word. Guess if you need a verb or a noun or an adjective. And even guess using your common sense. You can often guess um, what kind. Is it going to be a negative word, a positive word? And then you'll find it more easily in the text. Um, so for, for number nine, this is where they put these four things together. They, they call this a summary, a note, a, or notes, I think, table or flow chart completion. Um, some teachers separate those as four different things, but, but they're not. They're, they're just gap fills. They're just ways of presenting information. And the examples I use are, again, Thomas More, the desolinator. And if you go to my website, you can click again that link flowchart example and you'll find um, an example that you can practice with. So, yeah, one way of doing this is just following the logic of the text. Even if you don't understand all of the words, you can usually kind of slot them in like a jigsaw puzzle or a mathematical equation if you know what you're doing. And obviously, if your vocabulary is good, you'll be able to recognize the synonyms and work out what word they're looking for more easily. Question 10 and 11, well, 10 is diagram label completion. So my lesson relates to uh, Roman tunnels. It's a passage one where they've got a diagram of these tunnels. Um, and by the way, I'm telling you this just because if you want to do this yourself, uh, 
you you can just find these reading texts and do them yourself without my help. So that's why I'm telling you what's there. <laughs> um, so yeah, diagram label completion. Again, on my website, click the link. It will take you to a diagram to practice. And then 11, the last one is called short answer questions. It's another gap fill. And they ask you a question, you read the text, and there's a one word answer. Follow the same instructions as for all gap fill exercises. And I've got tons on my free website, so please go and practice there. Um, I've put a final question. Are there any other question types that you think I've missed? I've I've looked at loads of blogs and as I said, many of them separate flowcharts, diagrams, summaries into different uh, question types. IELTS Liz talks about choosing a title. Now, I haven't seen this in recent tests. Um, if you've seen that maybe in the general training, then please do let me know. I have an extra lesson called the the overall or the question 40. Question 40 is often like a summary question. Um, and maybe this is similar to what Liz is talking about, like choosing the best title for the paragraph. And I do have an example on my website. But actually, the, the official IELTS.org site does not mention these and IELTS IDP official site does not mention these either. Um, also, IELTS podcast blog doesn't mention these. So I, I'm not sure that they still exist. I don't know. So in conclusion, I really hope that this has helped you understand a little bit about the different reading types um, and, and not to get too worried about them because the strategies are the same and if you improve your reading skills you read every day do practice tests and build your vocabulary then that is the way to get a better score to be honest whether the blog says that there's 15 question types or three question types the main thing is if your reading is good you can deal with any question type so thanks for listening. Do leave your comments um, on the blog if you can. That would be interesting. Maybe put a link to something um, if I've missed anything. But I have honestly done my research. I do the work so that you don't have to. And um, yeah, let me know if you've got any questions and we'll chat soon. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.